Hi, I'm Brian Crum. I'm a neurologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I work in the EMG lab and I also specialize in neuromuscular disorders, including ALS or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. ALS is a uh, really devastating neurological disorder uh, that uh, causes weakness in patients. And uh, as neurologists, we think about this as a disorder that affects the upper motor neurons and the lower motor neurons. And you need both pieces of this to have your muscles move voluntarily. And when you have disease of both the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron, this is what we would define ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. And patients with this disorder generally begin with weakness in one part of the body. Uh, and it tends to be either in a foot, causing things like a foot drop or foot slap, or their foot hits the ground when walking, or sometimes starts with weakness of the hand, so they have trouble with gripping things uh, or doing things with their hand. In occasion, uh, the patients begin with weakness in the face, so they have trouble with talking uh, and sometimes chewing, but usually talking is the initial thing where the speech may be a little bit slurred or harder to understand. Uh, so patients begin with those kinds of symptoms, and generally the disease progresses, and the initial evaluation can include a number of different tests, uh, but it on average takes about a year to get that diagnosis made. Uh, because initially the symptoms can be hard to pinpoint to a diagnosis for sure. And sometimes the tests that are done early on don't always show the def definitive diagnosis. Uh, but we know that with ALS, as the disease progresses, people become weaker in that part of the body, either the arm or the leg or the face, and with time it tends to progress to other parts of the body. Uh, and uh, that is where really the disability uh, comes with the disorder as the disease progresses through the body. Some other common symptoms would include things like what's called fasciculations, which is muscle twitching, which you can see under the skin. Now that is something that occurs in everybody, uh, but when it's coupled with weakness and atrophy of muscles, it makes us also concerned about the diagnosis of ALS. Uh, most of the time there's not significant amount of pain, nor any trouble with sensation like numbness or tingling. People don't have headaches, they generally don't have problems with memory or thinking or with vision. Um, it's really just the weakness problem that uh, is the beginning of the disease and what happens as the disease progresses and gets worse. When patients get referred here by either their doctors or some patients call to get an appointment themselves and we certainly at Mayo uh, will be willing to see patients even without physician referrals for things like ALS. Um, we can usually try to get the type of testing that is needed very quickly. So uh, whereas at home it may take more time to get all the different tests done or see all the different specialists, in general we can get that done very quickly here at Mayo. So I think if patients or, or family members or referring physicians call for an appointment uh, through our appointment office, uh, we uh, will generally grant those appointments and try to see the patients in an expeditious fashion. Um, we can't always promise that they'll be seen within a day or two, but generally within a few weeks' time. Uh, we would like to see those patients. Uh, some of that may vary on the time of year. Uh, but um, some of it too, we try to coordinate other tests to be done at the same time. So when the patient comes here, uh, to the best of our knowledge, we have everything set up so the patient gets all the things they need uh, at one visit without having to return back for other appointments. Uh, so the requests come in, uh, generally the appointments are set up very quickly. Uh, and if patients, for example, are having speech trouble, then we have them see a speech pathologist if they're having swallowing problems, and we have a special clinic that it, it looks at the swallowing for assessment of that, and also if there are treatments or techniques that patients can use, uh, we look at that. Those are just a couple of examples. As mentioned, when patients come in, uh, oftentimes uh, part of that evaluation is an EMG or electromyogram, and that's a study where we give some electrical shocks to the nerve and measure how the nerves are working. And then we use a little needle, put it under the skin into the muscle and, and assess how the muscles are working. So that's usually part of the evaluation for just about every patient with a question of ALS, as that's a very important diagnostic tool. Uh, in general, we may be ordering some blood tests. We may be wanting uh, some MRI scans or other images to look at. Uh, in some cases, those have been done uh, locally uh, and we can review those ourselves. We generally have patients evaluated by a rehabilitation physician who can direct things like physical therapy and occupational therapy. Uh, if there's speech trouble, we have speech specialists uh, involved. If there's swallowing uh, issues, then we have swallowing experts involved. Uh, if there's breathing problems, then we have uh, pulmonary doctors or lung doctors available as well. And so that initial diagnosis really is a team approach where one may be seeing multiple different physicians and also having some tests, especially the EMG study. 
to try to then come to a conclusion. And I would say in most cases, uh, after several days of testing, then we as neurologists then would meet back with the patient and the family, go through the results of the tests and talk about the diagnosis. Um, so obviously we really try to spend a lot of time with patients and families as this is really oftentimes a really devastating diagnosis. And, and many times patients or families have that on their mind when they come here. If somebody's been told that that's likely what you have, that they're coming here to hope that we can find something else. And obviously we do everything we can to find something else, but many times we cannot. Uh, so we spend a lot of time with patients and families with regard to counseling. Uh, we have a nurse also that works in the ALS clinic that is usually involved with that first evaluation once a diagnosis is made. And then we provide a lot of ed educational material as well. Then when patients uh, come back for follow-up care, we have an ALS clinic. Um, and this runs uh, one day every week. And we generally have patients come back about every three months. And they see a team of, of uh, healthcare personnel, which include a neurologist, include speech specialists, swallowing specialists, rehabilitation specialists, nurse, social worker, as well as representatives from the MDA or Muscular Dystrophy Association and the ALSA or ALS Association. Um, so we have a multidisciplinary clinic where patients uh, come, they basically come to one room, stay in that room and everybody comes to see them. So it's very nice and that the patients do not have to go all over the clinic and wait several days. Everything is just done in one day, getting all those things done. Uh, and I think in that way we can really try to treat patients as, as uh, to a maximum benefit, and I think we really focus on the quality of life and doing everything we can to make sure uh, patients have everything that they need to maximize their quality of life. Uh, as we know, there's no treatment, there's no cure that can fix this disease and make it go away, uh, but we generally take the approach that it's not a curable disease yet, uh, but it is a treatable disease, and we can do things to try to help patients through this and help families through this. Uh, and I think really only through people who know what's going on in ALS, who know what resources are out there from websites to equipment to specialists, uh, can patients really get the maximal uh, treatment possible.